Welcome back to Old House Redo. I'm Jeff Spofford and we're back at the East Deering Curb Appeal Improvement Project. We started the week by building these columns and there was some structure that uh, needed to be built to go behind these. Uh, I spent some time in the driveway at the beginning of the week building those and I'll show you that now. We just cleared enough space so that we can build our new little structure. The uh, electricity gnomes came by uh, and got wires through to the uh, electrical light switches that are inside to accommodate our new fixtures. It's time to start building the structure. Uh, we need to build a pretty stout column structure behind it so that it won't wiggle and it'll stay in place. Uh, so we're going to do that now. I've cut everything uh, to size and I'm just going to assemble it and then we'll bring it over and install it. All right, let's put a column up. Of course, after we built the columns and got them up on the wall, the structures, we trimmed them out and uh, just as soon as we got all the uh, AZAC board up, we did a little special detail here and uh, I'll show you that now. All right, so after the columns were all said and done, uh, we needed to butt the cedar shakes up to them and blend them in uh, with the old. We got them all blended into the old and uh, we'll take a look right now and see just exactly how I did that. Let's shingle. So we'll start here and right off the bat we have a interesting cut. Gonna get around those bricks. Uh, I've left this piece of trim off so that I can cut the end wherever the shingle lay. So we'll just take that off of there for now. And then we'll come up the uh, circles in the wall. That's from blown in insulation. This house is really well insulated. And then up here we got another, we tuck them up under the trim piece at the top. I filled in the old light receptacles. The lights are going to be going right on these columns here. So we filled those in. Those wires have been discontinued. It's all new wiring for outside here. So let's get started. It's a lot easier to put 
put up all new as opposed to blending. But blend we shall. No project is a well done project, especially when it's uh, outside, uh, if you're not protecting against rain. So uh, we installed a little drip edge over the windows and... Oh, that's pretty neat. So rain will get in. You're shooting it like a gangsta. No exterior curb appeal project is complete without the details. And up here, we just added a little piece of crown molding um, to gussy it up a bit. And in order to hide the reveal here, because it came down below the existing trim, we uh, spent some time in the shop building these special little lentils. I'll show you how I did that. So we have all the trim up on the bottom half of the front of the house. So we're ready for uh, cedar shakes. There is one detail that cannot go unchecked. And we put this little piece of crown up over the 1960s edition. But it's exposed on the sides. So we'll dab that with a little primer and make a little decorative piece to accommodate that little gap. So let's go do that now. So here we have a little uh, design I'm making. So I'm just gonna make little, basically lentils, or cor uh, pardon me, cornice pieces that are just going to cover up the little gap in the crown. Very light pencil, so you might not be able to see it very well. So this is just, I'm just coming up with this quick to get it so that I don't know why, it looks really cool, the design. It looks really cool. There we go, that's the line we want. So the pieces that are going to stay, that's one of the pieces and that's one of the pieces. So now we get to cut out and I'll just shade what we've got to cut out. I'm cut out down here. Then we're gonna come around, up in here, get rid of this. Just color it in so I know what I'm doing. There we go, so that's what we're gonna cut out and then after everything is 
cut out, I will just take it on the miter saw and zoop, right off, and then we'll have two separate pieces here. So there's a little piece that's going to go up in that corner. Chop so it off. Now we have two roughly identical pieces. And believe it or not, you can sand this stuff. All right, and then the icing on the top of the cake uh, this week after doing the columns was just adding a little detail to the 1960s addition to the 1946 house. Just to dress it up a bit, we put in a little diamond pattern in the cedar shakes and I'm going to show you how I accomplish that. All right, we are here checking out this diamond pattern and uh, you know to even things out a bit we're going to do one on the other side. So uh, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, what needs to be done. So the first thing we need to do, um, all of all of these diamonds are six inches wide, exactly. And the way you determine the angle of the diamond uh, is you measure up. So imagine this is a rectangle, okay? So you have a, the rectangle here, and the angle is the reveal of the row you're working on. So I marked where the reveal is at each corner. And then the dead center, three inches of the six inch rectangle. Then you just mark a line and you cut the reveal. Now, unfortunately, each, the way the original house was built, each reveal is a different height. So I can't just mass manufacture these diamonds. I actually have to do them, you know, this is seven and an eighth. This is, this one was six and three quarters. This one's like seven and seven sixteenths. So we need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight diamonds. So I found uh, eight shingles that'll accommodate these diamonds. Um, of, differing width so we need to uh, set our table saw to six inches and we shall cut one now and I'll finish up the So I'll get the rest of these cut and then we'll cut one of the diamonds. All right, now we have eight equally cut six inch pieces. We're measuring again from the bottom of the shingle to the top of the reveal. So on this first row, it's seven and three quarters. So on this shingle, this guy is number one. We need to measure to three inches in the middle and then to seven and three quarters up here. So now I have it marked here on the wood and I'd love to show you how I'm going to cut that but I have to freehand it on the table saw just to get the straightest line possible. So I'm going to do that now and show you the result. So there is our first diamond. There we go. So now we got to put it over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the center point. Alright, so first we mark a level line so we know where to put all our shingles at the same height 
as the reveal all the way across. So in this case, it's seven and three quarters inches above the previous row. So that's this line right here. So now we have a level line where we can place our shingles. So based on that, I have the center line that I'm going to. All right, so we have it level here. And now we are going to put it up with a couple brad nails. And now it's in place. So what we'll do is put regular shingles right in here and then continue going uphill. So now that I've shimmed it, the first diamond is up. I've shimmed it so it's even with everything else going on. And now we can go up the next row. Same idea. Second row now. We're going to come up, go right here, the corner of the two. I'm going to make sure they are level. Make sure it's right there at the bottom. It is. And we're just going to put a couple brad nails in there. Like so. Next one, it's going to butt two on this side. Put those up with a couple brads and we'll continue our trek north. So now we're going to come and go uphill. So we're at the uh, midpoint here and it's just an overlay. A brad here and one up here. Here, and then we're gonna just wrap it around. So put one right up in here. Staple this to the building. So there we go. There's our our overlay, and we'll just repeat the process. And okay. final one is up, and that is how I create a pattern. Cedar Shakes. So that's this week's progress on the East Deering Cottage. Uh, we've got quite a bit done. The front facade is mostly complete. I just have to add a little piece of trim um, right there at the bottom of the peak and then the front will be complete and next week we're gonna work our way around back and start the process of gussying up the back of the house. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Uh, have you ever been to an old house and notice under the windows how the cedar shakes have one by one fallen off? Let's not do that here. What I usually do is just take a little wood glue, throw some on the back, just a, just a little bit, and put it up. And there we go. That won't come off. Nope. Ha! Just helps to have some nails in here to get it to go. So we'll do that and uh, the facade will be done.